Right, the HS2 line is a £55 billion vanity project that won't boost the North. Now, that's not gaunty saying it, although I do agree with it. As you know, I think HS2 is too little, too late, and a complete and utter waste of money, and they should drop it immediately. But that isn't me saying it. It's come from a study by a man called Professor Tony May from Leeds University and a transport consultant, Jonathan Tyler. They've looked at the TGV line in France, and they say that one's under construction at the moment. It's costing 20 million a kilometre, where ours is going to cost 105 million pounds a kilometre uh, for HS2 at the moment. Now, of course, those figures are going to go through the roof, aren't they? We don't need it, do we? What's your view? Well, let's speak to a man who's got very, very strong views on it, uh, Joe Rukin, uh, who is from uh, Stop HS2. He's their campaign manager. And he joins me now. Hello, Joe. Morning, Cornsey. Morning. This must be music to your ears. Well, it is, but sadly, it's going to be just another case of some very clever people actually analysing HS2, saying it's rubbish and being ignored. We have lost count of the number of reports there have been by independent people like the National Audit Office, the Public Accounts Committee, all these sorts of bodies that have looked at HS2, have looked at the figures have looked at the facts and said this is a really bad idea it's not achieving the objectives and it's costing too much and the government just say no not interested because right at the start there was never an assessment what's best for britain's transport infrastructure it was just right we're building hs2 it's going to go 250 miles an hour and that's it end of story anyone who says anything different Anyone who points out... Any it is a Luddite or a wrong. moron, it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. We've been labelled Luddites, we've been labelled NIMBYs. You know, you, you can't call the National Audit Office Luddites and NIMBYs, let's be honest. And they're, they're currently doing their third so, report on HS2. Normally, a project like this, they wouldn't have touched it yet, but they're that concerned they're in for a third time already. But isn't it a bit like the European referendum argument, or, or, or remaining in EU? The difficulty is... It's right across government. It's right across our political parties. They're all into it. The politicians love it. It's a massive, grandiose scheme. So it isn't just the Tories or just Georgie or Gideon Osborne who wants it. No, no, this is a, this is a problem. But you've got cross-party support for it from the, three main, from the three main parties. And they just bought into this idea that it's going to be this magic one that's going to solve the north-south divide, <laughs> that there's going to be loads of jobs, that it's going to bring economic prosperity and, you know, milk and honey for everyone. And it's just ridiculous. What is wrong All... with it? What is ro- what's your objection, Joe? I mean, when did you get on the train, so to speak, against it? What, what was your objection? Are you in NIMBY? Is it coming back your van, your back door, or what? What is it? No, not really. Well, when I first heard about it, it was two days before it was announced. Yeah. And they said it's going to be this new line, there's going to be a station in Coventry, uh, which obviously it turned out there wasn't going to be. No, it's now but in Birmingham. I, I, I'd already figured out where the line was going, because I was thinking, right, if it's going to be Coventry, I know where it's, the station, that, that, where it's crossing, because it yeah. must be crossing the existing railway line. Yeah. Um, when it was announced, I looked at it, and I thought, this is a really bad idea. And the more you looked at it, the more you looked at it, the more you found out that it was just terrible in terms of you know all of the stated objectives like it was going to take planes out the air when it was only going to birmingham and there's no flights between london and birmingham it was going to be this magic one that was going to reduce carbon emissions and well not if you go in 250 miles an hour it's not because the amount of energy that you need is absolutely ridiculous you know you're talking about those power stations that they're building at hinkley c hs2 will need half a reactor's worth of electricity uh, to get it going. And that's whether or not it can get at those speeds anyway. They then said, oh, it's this magic one that's going to solve the north-south divide. Every country you look at, when you build a high-speed rail network, it drags more economic activity to the capital. And because London is so much more dominant in our economy yeah, than, say, yeah. you know, Madrid is in Spain, yeah. the effect here will be far worse. Yeah, yeah. And now they say, oh, well, it's about capacity. Well, yes, it does give you capacity, but... You could get more capacity, far cheaper, benefit far more people by spending, by, you know, other projects. Like, well, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on a minute. I get a train from Coventry every day, as you probably know, down to town, down to Euston. 
we are at capacity there. We do need either more trains or more carriages or more lines. There is a problem, Joe. I mean, I, I think our railways, even though I slag off Virgin more or less once a week, they have got better, but there is a capacity problem, my friend. And I speak as somebody who commutes every day. Well, the, the capacity problem is going to get worse for you, John, because part of uh, the business... Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. ...cutting is cutting £8 billion pounds worth of existing services. Coventry, three trains an hour on those Virgin services you mentioned, it's going to go down to one. Yeah. Maybe two if you're lucky, but this is the thing. And that's but what no, but I've about. got to pick you up, though, Joe. You did say increase capacity or, or, or invest in the ex- in existing infrastructure. What would you do? Give me some positives rather than just slag- slagging off HS2, if you follow what I mean. What would well, you do to solve this problem? Well, if you want to invest in the in- existing infrastructure, there's certain pinch points you can address. Right, where you basically, it, it's, trains are doing right-hand turns into traffic. If you put in flyovers, you increase your capacity. You can cut the number of first-class carriages. You can improve... Oh, the yeah, signaling. I'd love to see that happen, I'll tell you. Go on, carry on. Well, yeah, you, a lot of the time, I, you know, I, I take the train from Cov myself, and a lot of time, first-class is empty. There's seven or eight but, carriages empty. I mean, we moan about it every bloody morning, mate. Go on. Exactly. And uh, you could increase increase the number of uh, carriages altogether. If you improve the signalling, you can fit more trains on the track. That's if you're looking at the existing infrastructure. If you want to build something new, there are better high-speed rail proposals, like HSUK is just one of them, but that follows the continental idea. One of the things that you said at the start is that the... Uh, HS2 costs 105 million per month per kilometre. Yeah. The French one costs only 20. That's because the French one, it's high speed rail in the countryside and then it goes into existing stations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. HS2, it's building new stations is, in the middle is. of nowhere. Like, you look at the one for Birmingham International, it's on the wrong side of the M42. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, you, you've got to get across the M42 to get to it. The, the one in crew is. Could be, be a new game show, through. that, couldn't it, though? Look on the bright side. <laughs> hey, listen, Gary Malloy, now we're getting people in, joining in on Twitter. He says, whoever thought they're getting to Birmingham 20 minutes, minutes quicker is worth spending billions on just amazes and saddens me. And I, I can't even agree with that. I mean, I remember I had to move south earlier. You know, I've been coming to London for 20-odd years. I had to move south because the train took forever. Now the train to Coventry is 58 minutes, so I can get here as quick as Dave gets here from Croydon, so to speak. So... It's different. And I like getting the train. I have enough time to have a coffee, either a chat, a bit of work, and then get here. It ain't a problem. Saving me another 10 minutes or 20 minutes ain't going to make a blind bit of difference. Am I right? No, absolutely. And this is the thing. The entire business case for HS2 is based on the concept that time is money, and therefore by going quicker... You're making money for the economy. <laughs> the, uh, the, and you multiply that by grossly inflated passenger forecast. You multiply that by the fact that everyone on the train is earning 70 grand a year. And hey, presto, you've got billions of pounds worth of economic benefits from this thing just by going faster. Because no one works on trains. That's the entire underpinning for the HS2 business case. So if you ever see someone tapping away on a laptop on that train from Cov every morning, Gaunty, yeah. you are wrong. That does not happen. Yeah, yeah. No one works on trains. All time is wasted. That's the only way they can make the business case of this thing work. And, and they haven't realised that the world has changed, that the internet, 3G, 4G, even Virgin's crap Wi-Fi in standard class means you can work on the train. And indeed, everybody does work on the train now so saving that time is irrelevant yeah absolutely this is the thing people are traveling for meetings they're preparing for their meeting on the train but the other thing is that the business imperative in the future is going to be don't travel for meetings use video conferencing instead you know arab who drew up almost all the plans for hs2 in the first three or four years that's what they've told their own employees. Don't travel to meetings, use video conferencing. Yeah. Because the way that that's progressing is just ridiculous. Well, I'll tell you something, Joe. I mean, not, 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 just the way, the not just the way video conference. I mean, Noel Edmonds, God bless him, he set up a video conferencing company years ago because he thought it was the future. But I'll tell you what the future is. I've just been in Goa and in New Delhi on holiday. Every night of the week, I spoke to the kids either on video via WhatsApp or via Skype or via, uh, what's the other one, FaceTime. 
on my bloody mobile phone looking at the old Arabian Sea every night and most nights video. I'm sorry, it we advances have happened. As you rightly say, you don't always have to go to a meeting. And with these uh, other software additions you can put in, you're going to have five or six, seven people, ten people, all talking at the same time. You can see them if you need to see the whites of their eyes. You don't have to get on a train and come to London anymore. They just don't seem to have realised this in their Westminster bubble. And they're going to spend our money, our tax money, on this white elephant. Yep. I, I, I can't disagree with a single word of that. How are we going to change it then? How, I mean, is there any way we can stop it? Well, at the moment, the, uh, Sir Jeremy Haywood, uh, the leading civil servant in the country, has yeah. been called in on panic stations because it's going massively over budget, and they're talking about lopping... Right, we've already lost the link to Heathrow. It's not going to Heathrow anymore. <laughs> it's not linking up to HS1 and the Channel Tunnel, yeah. which is absolutely bonkers. Oh, we're building a brand-new standalone high-speed railway. Shall we connect it to the other one? Oh, no, what? No, no. <laughs> we'll send them to Euston, and then they can walk, you know, <laughs> slap across... They can try and get down the Great West Road while I work to Heathrow. Yeah, go on, go, yeah. I know. But now, he's apparently, he's talking about Forgetting Euston altogether, Gee whiz. Uh, and, and and finishing at Wormwood Scrubs, uh, Old Oak Common, Wilton Junction, whatever you want to call it, you know, about uh, a mile north of uh, QPR's ground. Yeah, uh, and getting rid of the link to Manchester as well. So in the end, you might end up with HS2 doing Wormwood Scrubs to a field outside crew. Like, that's the journey that everyone's um, clamouring for. And let me just ask you another question, then. If they don't build it... or Sorry, no. Have they started building it? I know they've done some compulsory purchases. Have they actually physically dug any holes yet or anything? Uh, only... No. No. They've done a few test survey holes, and that's it. But most of the places, they haven't even surveyed the ground. What about the argument that it will create a lot of jobs? And also, what about the argument... That I heard Pete Waterman... Uh, you know, another one of us Coventry kids who made the point very clearly that no railway can ever just be justified on sort of economics, that actually it's about building infrastructure. That's the line he comes out with. I mean, has, is there any merit in his argument? Well, you know, building infrastructure as the economic activity, but you can uh, build better infrastructure cheaper that would uh, deliver more. And if you talk about the jobs, all you've got to do is look at Crossrail. Right, there's, there's two sets of people working on that. If you're working for Transport for London on the Crossrail project, you're probably British. If you're working for Crossrail Limited, you are almost certainly a migrant worker. And why does anyone think it's going to be any different with HS2? Because Crossrail made all these promises about jobs, all these promises about apprenticeships, and they have not delivered. They've, the contractors who've come in have brought in migrant workers to okay. build the thing. And those are the same contractors who are bidding for HS2. So why people think there's going to be loads of jobs in construction uh, is completely beyond me. There will be jobs, but they will be people who were shipped in from Spain or Poland or wherever. Good talking to you, Joe. Make sure you keep us informed of what's happening. Joe Rukin, uh, he is from uh, Campaign Manager Stop. HS2. This has got you going. John, you cannot just add more carriages to trains. They're limited by the length of the platform. So you have to extend the length of the platform and then add carriages. Job done. Should cost us about 10 quid, says Drop Forged. It is madness. Somebody's got to stop HS2. Cliff's in Hayes. He may have a view on it. Hello, Cliff. Hello, Gaunty. You want to um, talk to me well, radio? What do you want to say, big boy? Right. Well, where I live in Hillingdon, we're going to be devastated in the north of the borough through Ickenham, Ricelip, Harefield. Uh, 800 lorry movements a day. Yeah. Um, it's going to it's going to turn into a massive building site for 10 years. Now, <clears throat> where they're talking about the the cost of it, when this first started up years ago and it was mooted, they said it would cost 30 billion. They're now saying 55 billion. Yeah. The Institute of Economic Affairs have turned around and said it will be 80 billion. Yeah. And you've and you've got to ask, why are they pushing it through when everything says it's going to be a white elephant? Well, there's, there's one simple reason they're pushing it through. Yeah. It's called the Trans-European Network Directive. What, the, what, on earth, what on earth is that? Right, basically, it's a directive from Brussels that states that these things have to be built across Europe. And wherever they have been built, as, as you pointed out before, they've been an absolute disaster. Um, it will also... It, there's all this talk about it creating jobs in the north as well. Absolute hogwash. When they built one of these in France, all it, they said, oh, it will rejuvenate Marseille and places like that. All it did was drag more 
of, uh, of the jobs and more of the trade into the centre. Uh, so that one doesn't wash. And you also have to look at it. I've, I was working in Chester recently um, for an MEP. And I was getting a train from uh, London Euston to Chester, and I was there in two hours. If I wanted to go in the evening to visit my parents who live in Rochdale, it was taking me longer than that. I was having to go from Chester to Manchester Piccadilly in a 50-year-old cattle truck, get a bus from Manchester Piccadilly to Manchester Victoria, and then another train out from Victoria to Rochdale. That was taking nearly three hours in awful conditions. So they're talking about regenerating and rebuilding the north, but they're chucking all this money at a high speed line that they're being told they've got to build that will benefit absolutely nobody. So why are they persisting with it? Um, it's the directive, TENT. They have been told by Brussels. We had a meeting about HS2 in Ickenham, which is one of the areas affected in 2012. Um, Nigel Farage actually addressed the meeting and he said that he had seen very similar plans in Brussels 10 years prior to the meeting. Yeah, but to they've be fair to Farage to do and UKIP, don't forget, they have flip-flopped on this. They were against it, weren't they, several years ago? Out for it, now they're against it. Uh, actually, not strictly true. They said they were going to build new high-speed lines right. that have always been against HS2. Um, I mean, if they want to put money into infrastructure that's really... high-speed infrastructure that's really going to help, why don't they put the line in across the Pennines to link up the northern cities? That will cost a fraction, and it, that will gener generate jobs in those cities because it will be better interconnected. And my experience going from Chester to Rochdale is a prime example of that. Those are lines that desperately need upgrade. The trains are falling apart. Um, they're, always, they're always late. They're always overcrowded. And yet they're looking at putting another line from north to south. The problem in this country is getting east to west. We haven't even got proper road infrastructure in from the major ports like Felixstowe going into the Midlands and down to London. Mm, mm. Can it be stopped or do you share... Joe seems to think there's no way it'll be stopped now. The only, the only way it's going to be stopped, and I know you're going to say this is a cliche, but because we're being told to build it by Brussels, the only way to stop it is basically to leave the European Union and put our own people back in control in Westminster. There are a lot of MPs... But Georgie Osborne it. wants it. It's all about the Northern Powerhouse. That, that ain't going to change, is it? Or do you think after the 23rd, Osborne's toast as well as camera? I mean, this new poll in The Independent says that only 2% of people think he could be a leader. I mean, it's not a surprise to me. I think he's, he is to leadership what Howard Shipman was to care of the elderly. But well, I don't know what you think. <laughs> What do you reckon? He, yeah, he, he is definitely toast. I mean, if you look at every economic forecast that man has brought forward, has been an absolute, complete and utter shambles. He's doubled the national debt in, debt in six years. He really doesn't, doesn't know what he's doing. And there are a lot of conservative backbenchers whose constituencies that HS2 is going to wreck who are dead against this and are, are dead set to stop it. So um, you, of course, think, if you think on the 23rd then... Should we vote to get out, that will also stop HS2? It's the only chance we've got because at the moment the government are having to build it because Brussels has told them they've got to build it. If we leave, you, then the pressure groups, and I mean Joe Rukin is one of the hardest working guys that I know when it comes to pressure groups, and he's got a lot of good people behind him. They put the pressure on the MPs, the MPs put the, put the pressure on the government, we take control back into our own hands, then we can stop it. Good talking to you. Thank you very much indeed, Cliff, for your contribution today.